science, technology, medicine, everything we do is just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Nanomaterials, that's the way of the future. And so the thing that's exciting is the Nanoscale Materials Characterization Facility, or the NMCF as we like to uh, say. It's a, a suite of instruments that are used for uh, materials research all the way from the nanoscale up to macroscopic levels. People come to me and they think they know what their material is because they know what they put in to start with, but what comes out the other end is often really different and it's really exciting to be able to help them figure out what did they actually make. We can solve so many problems and uh, move the field forward uh, in, across the board with all this instrumentation. That's exciting. In our NMCF, we have a new scanning transmission electron microscope, which allows us to obtain sub angstrom resolution in combination with in situ transmission electron microscopy, where we can study, for example, corrosion in liquids, which is a very strong uh, topic researched here at our university. Ours is a state-of-the-art instrument and it has special capabilities. One of those being, um, the, uh, we have a monochromator on the electron beam, and so we can actually look at uh, vibrational states of materials. So uh, if you want to know how the atoms are vibrating or how the electrons in the materials are vibrating, and those things give rise to electrical thermal properties. Um, our instrument has the energy resolution to see those kinds of things, and so that's right at the forefront of uh, what you can do in materials research. In our other instruments, like our XPS system or our focused ion beam system, they have standard things, but we've also chosen each of those to have very specific, special capabilities. The focused ion beam system that we have is combined with a scanning electron microscope column, and we're using it to process samples uh, milling materials away to modify devices, electronic devices to cut wires, to introduce wires to materials, and to prepare samples for a transmission electron microscopy. In addition, the Focus Ion Beam system allows us to make 3D slice and view processes where we can slice away a material, take images or X-ray maps, make another slice, and continue the imaging process until we have a 3D view of the whole sample. With the XPS instrument, we're looking really right at the surface. So uh, the top maybe 10 atoms sitting on top of the surface, um, and generally that's about 5 nanometers. So this is a really important region if you're interested in how your material interacts with the environment around it. We've done a number of projects uh, in, with our new XPS instrument, um, including a project for a corrosion group uh, at the University of Virginia, looking at uh, the corrosion on steels that have been exposed to uh, a sea environment. And we looked particularly at the um, changes in the surface uh, composition, the corrosion, and the surface chemistry. We have four different X-ray diffractometers in the lab. One is for single crystal, three are for polycrystalline materials. Polycrystalline materials could be powders, they could be thin films, they could be bulk materials. Basically anything that has some sort of long-range order. And we use these instruments to determine what the structures of the materials are. So we can figure out what is the three-dimensional arrangement of the atoms and molecules in the materials. The benefits to having access to all this type of equipment, it gives you the versatility to analyze your sample, no matter what kind of sample it is. You have all the choices in front of you. It's like one-stop shopping. Science is a, a very interactive process. It's an international effort, it's not a local effort. So our facility supports things from local all the way up to an international level to do materials research and solve nanoscale problems. 